Hello everyone, I'm Supreet and I welcome you on my channel Learn English with Supreet. In this video, I'm going to discuss how to write an excellent letter to the editor. Letter to the editor is a formal letter. So let's know it. Why do we write letters to the editors? Let's know that first. We write letters to the editors to comment on news item, articles, other people's letters, to complain, to express opinions on prevalent issues, to praise, thank or suggest, etc. So this is, this is why letter to editors are written. Now, format of letter to the editor. First comes sender's address and date in this format only. And then we leave a line and we write receiver's address. And then again, a line is left and then salutation and subject. Remember, if subject is written after salutation, it should be enclosed in brackets like I have enclosed it in brackets here. It can be written before salutation also. There you are not in need of enclosing it in brackets. Whereas if you write it after salutation, then do enclose it in brackets. Then leave a line and then comes the body of the letter. And then another leave another line and complimentary close your signature, name and designation. Now let's discuss the format now, format of this letter. First is subject. Now, your subject, it should be a catchy line or phrase that tells the reader what would your letter talk about. Your subject should be catchy enough that the reader, without reading the content of your letter, comes to know what your letter would be about. Example, regarding rising prices. So, rising prices, herein means to say that the letter, the content of that letter talks about rising prices. Now, introductory para. Elaborate the subject in the first para. That is called introductory para. Example, through the columns of your reputed or esteemed newspaper or magazine, I'd like to share my views regarding rising prices of essential commodities. Now, see, I have elaborated my title, elaborated my subject, subject in this introductory para. Now, body of the letter. Now, add details to your argument and conclusion. Conclude with the right and practical action suggested as a solution to the issue or problem. I hope it is clear to you. Now, these are the parts of a letter. Take a quick click of it. The first one is ABC School Amitsar. This is the return address or letterhead or you can simply say sender's address and then date. Then we have receiver's address. We call it inside address also or letter address. Then we have salutation like here it is dear sir and then we have subject. Then we have body of the letter and then complimentary close is here and then we have name and designation or signatures and signatures. Just to take a click of it for your future use. Now, starting your letter, you may use the suggested phrases. To make your letter more expressive, you can use the given phrases like, We are writing this letter to inform that, to apprise you that, to intimate you that, or to bring to your notice. We are writing to highlight, to throw some light or to justify. There are so many other phrases which you can use, but try to use, you know, expressive and good phrases. Now making a request. Obviously, we make requests also when we request them to publish it in the columns. We request them and in any way, even if we are making another request, we can use these phrases. 
we would appreciate it if you would publish this article in your newspaper. I'd be beholden to you if my views are published in this newspaper. I'd sincerely appreciate if you could publish my views in the front columns of your newspaper. I would be grateful if you could publish. I would appreciate your immediate attention to this matter. Now see, these are the phrases which you can use to make a request. Learn like you, you learn one or two phrases and you can use them when you write letters. So these phrases would be making your letter more expressive. Now ending, you are to only use your sincerely or truly. Obediently, faithfully are not used these days. These are kind of superfluous now, so we don't use them. Sincerely and truly, you should use any one out of these two. So do learn the spellings of truly. Many students commit mistake here. Spellings of truly are T-R-U-L-Y. There is no E in it. Now, we are going to consider this letter. Now see, I have done this in this manner so that you can make out directly like how the format of this letter is and where you are supposed to leave a line. Now sender's address is 15A Model Town, Delhi and then date 14 November 2019. Then leave a line, just notice it. And then, and you should notice this part, which is in red ink. This part tells you what information you are to give where. And then receiver's address like the editor, expressions, Kasturba Gandhi Mark, New Delhi. And if you know the pin code, you can add it in this manner. Then leave another line and your salutation. In case you want to use dear, esteemed, respected, you can. Or otherwise, you can leave it with, you know, as such only. You can write only sir. And then your subject. Now see. Subject is deteriorating standard of living in the capital city. The subject is too clear. The subject is too clear that the reader of this letter would come to know from the subject itself that this letter is going to talk about deteriorating standard of living in the capital city. So that means something which is becoming poorer, poorer and poorer. Now you note it. And close the subject in brackets if it is written after salutation. I'm repeating it again. And close the subject in brackets if it is written after salutation. Now, then we after writing that subject, we leave another line. And then the request for space and topic of this article or topic of this, you know, letter is being written over here. Through the columns of your esteemed or reputed. You can use any one out of these, reputed or esteemed, or in case you have better adjective, better adjectives, you can use them. I wish to express my views on the deteriorating standard of living in the capital city of Delhi. Now, see, this is the introductory para. Herein, I am requesting them to publish my views. And secondly, I am introducing the topic which I'm going to discuss. Now, use a hook, a question exclamation or announcement in it's a different para it's the second para which is you know a very big paragraph it contains a lot of uh, content and here in or only you you describe you know the, that subject and you know that introductory para you add details to it you analyze you add data you add facts and this is how this para goes so herein I suggest that you should use a hook. Hook I mean to say something that makes your reader curious and that makes your reader curious to read further, to delve deeper into the matter of your letter to the editor. So like here I've used what does the standard of living mean? Obviously we are not expecting an answer from them. We are only making a question over here so that we can make them curious it's a kind of repertoire something which is answered by us only by ourselves only we don't expect an answer now see doesn't it mean possessing expensive goods of comfort posh bungalows and peaceful living conditions including health and hygiene pollution free environment and above all a value-based society and then see, 
we are talking about the present status now we described that we are talking about deteriorating standards of living and we already told them what standard of living we expect and what is the reality we are going to talk about now the present status or condition in different para considering all these the living conditions in delhi are really really appalling dumps of garbage heavy traffic congestion on the roads growing atmospheric pollution high levels of noise pollution overcrowding at public places etc throw ample light on the deterioration in the people's standard of living in the capital city now see all the problems we've talked about we were talking about deteriorating standard of living in the capital city why it is deteriorating we've given all the problems over here dumps of garbage heavy traffic is there congestion is there on the roads atmospheric pollution is increasing noise pollution is increasing overcrowded you know public places are overcrowded and these things obviously are not a sign of standard of living good standard of living and here in you add your add personal details also into uh, also into it like here our lungs are hungry for fresh air and green belts you know when you add those personal emotions your own emotions into it it more it makes your you know writing more expressive more expressive and you know others can connect with it and then the large number of now we are going to talk about reasons or causes this letter of editor whenever we write a letter to the editor we obviously talk about some issues prevalent issues so in case those issues are there your letter is about some issue you should you know first of all introduce it sec secondly talk about it and thirdly give reasons and causes of it and do give facts and figures do add facts and figures to make your letter more expressive and contentful the large number of immigrants now why what is the reason behind deteriorating standards of living in the capital city the large number of immigrants from other states to delhi put tremendous pressure on the resources of the city the problem is immigrants large number of immigrants they are putting pressure more pressure on the resources of the city the city is already overpopulated and you know those immigrants they are putting more pressure on the resources the housing problem is growing rapidly with lack of civic amenities amenities means facilities life is so busy that there is a little interaction among neighbors hurry and worry is what best describes the life in the capital city with growing consumerism and rising prices the disparity between rich and poor is increasing day by day so i've talked about all the problems all the problems and now talked about reasons and causes also and then i need to give a solution to this which i think you know would be applicable and would you know remedy the situation but the solution should be practical and applicable something judicious needs to be done to remedy the situation more green belts and silence zones should be created the unrestricted inflow of people to delhi should also be checked check means stopped only then the standard of living can be improved so this is how you give a give a solution you've given a very valid and applicable solution you you are not telling them you know to Uh, obviously you know to grow more and more trees and all that basically you are saying to make more green belts over there because you know obviously there are so many colonies and area is already populated we can't you know uh, vacate that area to you know uh, grow trees and all that and you know make gardens and all we can't do that way the practical solution is we can increase the green zones we can select some zones and there in you know lot of trees can be grown and uh, some zones can be selected where in you know it, it should be uh, you know written over there that this is a silence zone so obviously silence and some zones are green zones where in you lot of trees are there so obviously it will be you know making the air of that you know city fresh and you know full of oxygen so this solution is applicable for a metro city like delhi 
So I'll read out the solution again. Something judicious needs to be done to remedy the situation. Like more green belts and silence, silence zones should be created. And one thing, unrestricted inflow. Already there are so many people who've already come. So what we need to do is now that we should stop the unrestricted inflow of people to Delhi. So due to that, obviously standard of living could be improved, can be improved because the government could take care of the population, you know, of a sizable population which is there in the there in the city. And if it if it keeps increasing, obviously there would be more pressure on the resources, which eventually would compromise with the standard of living. And now see. Then you are to leave a line and yours truly and your name. Thanking you. It's again not needed. It's uh, you know, not used these days. In case you want to use, you can. And even if you don't use it, it's all right. And now see, this is the uh, letter to editor template. Just take a click of it. This is how your letter to the editor should be written. These are the instructions. These are the instructions you should follow these are the instructions and this is how your letter would go introductory para then you elaborate your topic give analysis and facts mention reasons and give a practical solution fine now you've gone through this video about this how uh, right about this letter to the editor so i give you these two letters to write you can choose any and write one letter using the template add letter to the editor template which i should uh, showed you in the previous slide like here so following this letter to editor template you write any one letter out of these two to have notes on this you visit my blog that is supreet deol blogspot and do subscribe and, uh, and subscribe my channel that is learn english with supreet please like and share my videos thank you so much keep watching keep learning